to do. So it looks like I can climb this little mountain of bone and get over to this oval window. So that's the route he goes. He, he paints this little red line along little bones and gets there. And the bones have a name. There's three of them. Okay. <laughs> Did I mention the color blind thing and shouldn't mock me a little bit? <laughs> She, tried to say quiet. Uh, she did not. She had no intentions of saying that quiet was so freaking. I think my microphone might have been picked now, up. Now, we have three bones. We have one that's called the malleus. We have a middle one that's called the freaking incus. And we have another one that's called the stapes. They have slang names as well. The malleus is sometimes referred to as the hammer. The incus is sometimes referred to as the anvil. And the states is sometimes referred to as the spirit. <coughs> Three little bones in the eyes. Sometimes referred to as ossicles. So, our little man wants to have some fun on the way in. So he wants to see what happens. And he starts rapping on the malleus. Raps on the malleus to see what happens. And lo and behold, he sees this little thing vibrate over there. He's like, oh, that's freaking cool. So it does again. <coughs> Some lady comes to the window on this side. That story sucks with that one. That's what this does. It's kind of like Morse code. As the tympanic membrane vibrates, as sound comes in, it then transmits the vibration to each of these bones. And as that transmission comes in, it's then going to start to cause that vibration that's going to go into the inner ear. Okay? So we had middle ear, and then this is the inner ear. So he climbs along. He cut through his tympanic membrane after he went back the oracle through the external ear <coughs> to the tympanic membrane, climbed along the malleus on, on to the incus to the state. So now he's sitting here. And he's saying, all right, this isn't so bad. And now he sits there because he's freaking tired. He he's kind of took him a while to climb along all these bones. And now he's sitting here and he's like, let me take a look at what's going on. There's something weird about this. If I look to my right, I see this thing that looks like a snail. If I look straight up, I see these little canals, these little circles, and they're all perpendicular to one another. I don't know what that's about. And if I look deep, I see this big yellow thing that looks like a nerve. Now he's starting to wonder, what the hell is going on? And he's got really good hearing. The fact is, that's why he climbed in the ear. So he's got really good hearing. And now all of a sudden, his host starts to move his head. And what he notices, and what he can hear, is that there's fluid that starts to move through these little canals. These little, these little canals are referred to as the semicircular canals. And each one of these canals is perpendicular to the other. They help us orient ourselves like this. One of the canals is going to be for sagittal plane movement, one's going to be for frontal plane movement, and the other one is going to be for transverse plane movement. Okay? And what they help us do is they help us with balance. They help us with equilibrium or balance in general. Now, the other thing that we see in here is that we're going to find this has nothing to do with anatomy. This is a, it's a totally a medical side. There are truly, and I'm not making this up, there are little rocks inside here. And we see them right now. I'll, I'll show you on another picture. The little rocks are referred to as autoconia. And occasionally, through trauma, infection, and fever, Occasionally, the little autoconia, the little rocks, they're nothing but calcium carbonate, can break off and they can get lodged in each of those, in one of those little canals. And we call that vertigo. And it has a specific name. It's called BPPV, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. And what it is, is it really someone, if they make a quick adjustment and they're getting dizzy, they get nauseous and the like. And the treatment is actually really easy. The treatment is just get the rocks out of the canal. So what you do is you position the patient and you kind of turn their head a certain way and you bring them from sitting to supine and then sideline. And the maneuver is just there to try to 
get the rocks out of the canal. And it's really, really successful. And, be, and once you move the rocks out of each of these canals, the fluid that's in them can flow naturally because it's no longer blocked. And now their balance gets back to normal, i.e. no more vertigo. Okay? What happens when you have to get your tubes replaced? The tubes in here? Usually what happens is that they degrade it or there's, there's, they're, they're so occluded that you can't actually kind of, kind of have fluid and you have to have all three planes for good balance. Balance comes from three things, our eyes, these, and the little receptors that are in all of our joints. And maybe they've talked about them in terms of the counter-receptors in class. And so the balance comes from those three components. If I, if I don't have one of the canals working properly, then one of these planes is going to be deficient in terms of balance. And you can actually see it on the patient. Sometimes it's the way they held their head, the position their head, because they're trying to tap and bias towards the other canals and move away from the one that doesn't work. And it's not really that sophisticated of a surgery. They just make a new canal. So they essentially reattach. This, there's a little area called the utricle on this side. And what they're going to do is they're going to then attach a tube near side, not unlike a bypass in a heart around the clock vessel. They just they do it. They put a tube in there to kind of get through that. And it's a really actually relatively easy procedure to get to because this if, if a little man can claw in there, so can a surgical tube. So, so they can actually get in here pretty easily. Huh? Yeah. And the problem comes in is that though is that you know it's not perfect as you just found out. The the root cause of the clogging. What the hell is it? And again, that you know, maybe it could be that maybe <laughs> genetically, the tube where you're at is the position of its heart it is kind of more compressed. Maybe this portion of the vestibule nucleus is a little bit smaller, and so you know, one of the tubes is more prone to being clogged than another. When you have water in your ear, where does it hang out? Oh, right there. Yeah, can't get. If the little man has to take a Swiss Army knife to get through. What is that called? Yeah, the water, it gets, you can get stuck all the way up into these little crevices, but that's where it's at. What about ear infections? Similar thing. Most ear infections by themselves can stay in, that stay in the outer area. They can be inner ear infections on this side. Inner ear infections are harder to deal with, and years ago you could die from them. Because what happens is that the infection could make its way down and migrate into the mastoid process. And the only way you could treat that patient is to cut off the mastoid process. Because there's little sinuses in the mastoid process. All right, so here's our oracle. Our man went through the tympanic membrane. He climbed up the three bones, malleus, incus, and stapes. He saw the two windows, the oval window behind the stapes, and the round window is going to be going into our cochlea. He looked up, and he saw these three canals perpendicular to one another, semicircular canals. We know that we use those semicircular canals to help us with balance. As he looked over here, he saw a nerve. That nerve had two parts to it. It's cranial nerve number eight, and it's actually called a vestibular cochlear nerve. Vestibular for balance, cochlea because it's attached to the snail for hearing. When we look at this cochlea, it ends up looking like this inside, where we have different types of chambers for the flow of liquid. If you look at the way I'm kind of showing you this, this little chamber here is a minuscule version of a blow-up. And there's different types of fluids in there. Let me see if you have to know these before I start stopping. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so. If we look here, there's little chambers. Each of these chambers has liquids. Now watch what I'm going to do. We have two big ones and we have one that looks like a triangle. You buy it? Mm -hmm. Two bigger ones and one that looks like a triangle. The inside one is the one that's actually encased in bone. That inside one that's right here and has this little bump in it, and on your li I'll go over what the organ of Corti is in a minute. The inside one here has a fluid inside that's referred to as endolith. Notice how I got there. I have three chambers. I have two outside ones and one inside, inside endo, endolith. 